Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 22 of Immigration Talk. I'm here with my wonderful associate, Anya Sergeva. We're here to talk about immigration updates. And some really cool stuff has happened with regards to extensions and, and updates I really want to share with you. Today is May 3rd. If you're interested in contacting us, our emails are on the website. I, I'm sorry, on the video if you're watching here. If you're listening on the podcast, which are a big chunk of our listeners are, Anya's email is Anna, A-N-N-A, at jqklaw.com. And I'm John Kasravi, info at jqklaw.com. You could, uh, you could you could contact us for more information about scheduling and consultation. If you haven't already, like and subscribe wherever you're watching. Leave a five-star review, especially on the podcast channels. That's really helpful. But having said all of that, the introductory stuff, um, this is also one more introductory thing. This is all general education only. It's not intended for individual uh, legal guidance. But having said that, thanks so much for coming on again. Thank you, John. How are you today? I'm doing good. I think both of us have a little bit of a cough, so uh, we'll be muting back and forth as it comes. I'm sure a lot of people have it. All across America, it's like, it keeps getting hot and cold, and that just messes everything up. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely going through it right now. I'm getting better for the last few days. But I'm really happy about the news about the employment authorization documents. Uh, could you talk about what that means, these work permits, and, and how it's going to help people? Yes. Yeah, so just today in the morning, like... Um... I don't know, a couple hours ago, USAS announced that they're going to do <clears throat> automatic extensions of EAD, of work authorization documents, for some categories. So I just go want to go over this um, really fast. We don't have much time here. So uh, first thing is that uh, this applies to renewal applications only. Okay. Uh, and for new applications uh, that are filed uh, filed between uh, May 1st, 2022, uh, and um, I don't know this the other date. <laughs> it was <laughs> over here, but yeah. So uh, anything that is filed after May um, 1st, 2022, will get a two uh, 540 day automatic EAD extension compared to I um, 180 day automatic extension that was previously. Important. Yeah. So, for example, if you had an adjustment of status case pending and, uh, you know, your case wasn't finished, uh, if before expired you file for a new renewal, you get an automatic 180-day extension while the renewal is pending. Now they made it 540 days, which is good because it saves the hassle of, like, dealing with that expiration issue. But at the same time, it's like, why are they giving you 540 days? What does that mean? Are they? <laughs> that means the delays are coming big time. It could mean potentially... They're rearranging their staff to take the staff that works on EADs to work on other stuff to speed it up. Internally, they don't communicate properly with us why they're doing this kind of stuff. So it is good, but it does mean something behind the scenes that there's such a dramatic increase in how much these are going. But go ahead. Uh, we go yeah. through some they, of the list of things are included. Yeah, they provided a bit of explanation uh, why they're doing it. They're saying that because the backlog is huge, because a lot of people, they ran out of this automatic extension and they may lose their jobs. You know, uh, they may not be able to find new job or continue their current employment. Uh, so and uh, because of pandemic, because what happened uh, with the previous administration, the uh, USA has got really backlogged with this um, with EAD uh, employment authorization documents. Um, yeah, so yeah. They're, they're working on basically on reducing this backlog. But at the same time, by giving this extension, uh, can we expect that the renewal process might take up to like 540 days to get a yeah, new card? Yeah. So again, we have we have a lot of questions that are not answered here. It, but going it, back going back to <clears throat> to what I started with, it's renewal applications only. Okay, uh, this rule is temporary, so it's not gonna last forever. Uh, again, I lost this date. It was somewhere. I saw this date somewhere <laughs> uh, for how long it's gonna last. But this is temporary rule. So general rule is the extension, 180 days ex day extension. Now they're saying it's going to be 540 day extension. Again, this is temporary. It's not going to last forever. Okay. Um, the extension is automatic for those uh, who are uh, eligible. And John, you just showed on the screen. Okay. Before October 27, 2023. Yes. Thank you so much for helping me with that. Yes, so through May May 4th through October 26, 2023, okay, the, this new 500-day extension rule will be valid, okay? And um, eligible categories, not every category is eligible, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, so who is eligible? I will go over the most uh, popular categories. So, for example, uh, A12, which is temporary protected status granted, eligible. Uh, spouses of EL1, H1B spouses, 
they're eligible. Okay. Uh, C8, very popular category, asylum application pending. Okay. C9, for example, that we use in our like marriage, uh, marriage uh, adjustment cases. Okay. And other cases who apply for adjustment of status under um, under 245 of uh, Immigration Nationality Act. So C9 category is um, eligible for this automatic 540 day extension. Also, um, while self petitioners, uh, C31, those are eligible. And who's not eligible? Um, again, it's a huge list uh, of those who's not eligible. Generally, like F1 students, OPT, STEM, they're not eligible for this extension. Uh, C1 power lease, too, they're not eligible for this extension. And specifically for power lease, a lot of people who uh, crossed the border recently, I'm talking about Ukrainians who were able, able to get uh, through Mexico and got humanitarian parole um, through the border, they may apply for this um, for um, uh, special employment authorization document based on their parole and category is uh, C11. So this category is not eligible for this 540 day extension. And again, it only works for renewal. It doesn't work for initial applications. Yeah, and okay. interestingly, the website I, I was showing on, for those who are watching online, USCIS.gov slash EAD auto extend, which lists the different categories. Uh, it still says 180 day extension. They didn't add the information on uh, that. This is a temporary 540 day extension. So if you go there, it doesn't say it there. It's on another webpage of USCIS. Um, it's a long thing, but if you go to the newsroom, there's a, there's a press release that they just launched um, today. So um, that information is there. It's what they're doing now. So be prepared for that. Uh, and always just file the AD early. So I think you have 180 days for six months before expiration that you can file for a renewal of an EAD. Might as well do it sooner so you get a decision sooner. Because what happens is although the paperwork, your receipt notice, you have all this official documentation that says you have an extension and you're okay to work, not every employer is going to understand that. And they might not believe it. They may be worried about hiring you. So there's a legal stuff, but then put the legal stuff aside. Practically speaking, it, it just creates headache for you, creates hassle. You might go to the DMV to renew your driver's license, and they won't understand that there, even though it's a law. But if they don't want to, you waited four hours in line at the DMV, as you all know how long it takes. And by the time you get in the front of the line, they'll say, no, we don't believe you. And you're like, look, USCIS.gov, this, that, and they don't care. So that kind of stuff happens frequently. So renew as soon as possible to avoid this kind of stuff from happening. Yes, important important point that you just brought uh, John up is that, for example, those who file in applications after uh, May 4th, looks like you guys gonna get um, notice uh, with 540 day extension. And for example, those who filed previously before that, they're gonna get this 100 day uh, notice extension. And uh, USAS will not issue new notices for those renewal applications who are pending as of, as of today. So that's where the that's where the problem comes. That's where the problem comes. That John talking about uh, that a lot of employers will not know what to do with that uh, I9 compliance. Um, even though in this again in the statement that USCIS released today, they um, uh, they provide some guidance on how to uh, how to help employers with with that. But again, for those who has pending. Uh, EAD application uh, applications today don't expect uh, to have to receive a new notice um, extension notice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. Now, but the, the second thing we want to talk about is just awareness, especially for those following their cases on their own. Uh, USCIS frequently makes updates, and since Trump came, they usually give would, every time they update something, they would tell you months ahead of time to so be prepared. But it was a tradition I started. Trump is continued by administration is they change something and then they send you notice that has changed. And we had several things like that change this week, um, you know, a couple affecting the TPS situation um, and the Ukraine issue. So um, TPS, temporary protected status, was announced for Ukraine, Afghanistan, uh, South Sudan. But in particular, uh, the, the, for Ukraine, I think, cases, they changed the address of where you can mail it to. They just changed it. We got the message overnight. So be prepared. Make sure you don't send stuff in the wrong location. And kind of the best practice procedures, both lawyers and racial lawyers always remind people in our own staff. The last thing we do before we print a case to the government is we go to USIS.gov and check what the filing fee is right now because they changed out that zone yet. The address is supposed to be mailing to and be very specific because if you're in California, there's an address that goes there. If you're in New York, potentially there's, a, there's an address that goes for that. And then finally, uh, you check the address on the, the rest of filing fee, address, and the form type because they may change the form on you without telling you, which is another thing that happened with a couple of forms that changed this week. Yes, and uh, what I noticed today, for example, we received today 
um, notice from USA saying that they changed addresses for T for Ukraine TPS. And I looked through this, I didn't see much change. Maybe it's like within some states that are changing, but uh, they're saying today is May 3rd, and they're saying that as of May 2nd, which was yesterday, they already changed this address. So possibly some people who filed uh, their applications yesterday, they already filed it, uh, used the wrong address yeah, yeah. for that. Now, luckily, when you see the lockbox, they're supposed to internally adjust it. It's in their discretion, they say, but it's it's just it's kind of ridiculous for them to change something and then go back in time and change. It doesn't make any sense, but that's just what we deal with every day with immigration. That's what makes us crazy jobs for us, right? <laughs> that's why you need immigration lawyers because we got to be on top of this stuff every second of every day. Uh, it's all we talk. Vanya and I are talking pretty much morning, night, and, and emails and Slack. This change, that change. Be aware of this. It's an all-consuming profession. That's that, that's just part of what we signed up for. Uh, but yeah. the other forms that changed that we got noticed, the I-129F, fiance visa K-1, K-2, and the K-3, K-4. Uh, it doesn't look like change. I haven't gone too much detail, but it looks kind of the same. But you got to make sure you have a new format. Sometimes they change the form edition, and it looks exactly the same. But if you don't send a new one, uh, and then they're going to reject the case or deny it later for wrong form. As well as they changed the I-134 form and changed the name. It was a whole redo. Could you talk about the I-134 changes? Um, yes. Yeah, so I-134 form, um, it used to be called affidavit of support, I believe. Now it's called declaration of uh, of support or something like that. So they changed the name. Now this I-134 form uh, is used primarily for for the United for Ukraine program. But apart from that, this form uh, is used, for example, for K-1 applications. Um, it's it can be used for someone uh, who's coming here on tourist visa and they need support, right? Um, their U.S. sponsor they can they can submit this form to uh, to help um, uh, with with that. So yes, it's declaration of financial support. It's as John mentioned, it's total redo of what of how the I-134 form looked before. It's completely different form. Uh, it has it asks for so much information and honestly if you look john can you show the first page please and show the uh, expiration date uh, that's on the form so uh, yeah interesting thing that it says it expires on october 31st 2022 uh, so it might not mean, mean much but it maybe they just did this form specifically for the uniting for ukraine program and by the time it's done they're gonna go back to the previous i-134 form that um, has less information again uh, but now, if you if you are um, doing Uniting for Ukraine, you need to use this form. But again, Uniting for Ukraine is only online application. But this is yeah, the same yeah. form. K1, uh, new edition. Again, and you need to list your assets. You need to list like beneficiaries' assets. It, it asks for so, so much more information than, for example, the previous I-134 I used to ask. Yeah, yeah. Create a lot more work that we weren't expecting for fiance visa cases we started. And a lot more just people's business and asking for documentation that, that's not needed. Now... One question that pops up a lot of time when people bring it up to me that they'll find forms online or forms we send them to sign. And they're like, wait, attorney, this form says expired on the top. Why are you sending me an expired form? USCIS frequently doesn't update the form. It expires and maybe years go by using the same form. It's still valid. What you got to do uh, is go to USCIS.gov and uh, I'll share the screen right here. Um, it, when you go to uh, any USCIS.gov form page, there's a part where it says addition date. Uh, and then it says the additions they're accepting. So here, for example, on the I-134, it says starting June 27, 2022, we'll only accept the, uh, April, the April 25th, 22 edition. So it's, it's sorry, June. That means they'll accept the old one that was there. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a cutoff date. When the old stop one for, K, for K-1 visa cases, for example, or some other paper file cases, they can. But, for example, United for Ukraine, it's like online application. And this online application looks uh, exactly like the new form. Yeah. So for United for Ukraine, it's solely new form. Yeah, this is for K ones. They give us some out, so it's good to use. But then again, you submit this to the embassy, they may say, "Hey, why don't you give us a new one?" So it's just uh, it's always there's always something going on, and and sometimes there's no answer to these things. You just got to do it, and then see how it plays out. But thank you so yeah. much for coming on, Sean. You talking about these updates? I love doing them and getting into it, and uh, just kind of trying to help uh, everybody. Now we do post clips of all this stuff, so it's short form. If you follow us on our social media on Instagram slash jkklaw.com on Facebook, uh, as well as LinkedIn, the, the, the firm page, and, and there's Twitter and all this kind of stuff. So we're everywhere you, you could find us, it will be found. Everywhere you could find uh, information like this will be will be there. Um, JQK Law Firm is the best way to search. And if you want to reach out, talk with Anya, just email her at anna at jqklaw.com, A-N-N-A -N -N -A at jqklaw.com, especially about this United for Ukraine stuff. She's the lead on that. 
Uh, and uh, you can always contact me as well at info at jqklaw.com. Thanks, Sonia. I appreciate coming on the show again. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And we will get back with more immigration stuff uh, next week. Yes. Bye-bye.